All right, I now have to introduce shadow box. Under light box, there's this option called shadow box. It is by far my best friend now. Okay, how it works is, let, well, let's uncheck it and check it back in. Go to sub tools, turn off shadow box, turn up the resolution on it, and check shadow box again. As you can see, it updated with a box or a shape. This shape is created because masks exist here, here, and here. If I was to add a little bit to the mask by using one of the tools, whoops, these tools are my favorite friends now. This one right here. Control and Command allows you to add more to it. As you can see, by adding more to it this way, um, it didn't do a whole lot here or there. Okay. That's because all planes have to be sort of updated along the way to create a new bump in that area. Okay, as you can see now, it's made based upon this shadow, this shadow, this shadow, it's added a new set of boxes to this. And if I was to clip it away using Control Alt like that, you can see because that shadow is back there, that's what it looks like here, and etc. and so forth. It works just like that. Now it becomes confusing, no doubt. Um, you know, it took a while to get used to, and now I can't live without it. So let's look at some practical applications for it. Uh, I'm going to show you a really good practical application here in the next couple videos, but for right now, I just want to get you used to using it. Here's the lasso tool. So this lasso tool, you can hold Control and Command, click and drag, and you can create any shape. Okay, and that'll create the shape over here. And then, um, if I jump into the top view, and let's say hide this, I can hold Control and Shift, and it'll hide this plane and leave me with all the other ones. Well. All I do have to update is the bottom by holding control command and it'll just give me a sliver just like that. And you can see how easy it is to make really weird odd shapes in ZBrush now. Uh, let's say I go in here and use the circle command let's say I need a hole right here well I use control and alt and sometimes it's a little fickle there we go and I can create a hole in it I can create little tiny holes everywhere just like that just because the shadow exists like that way So you can imagine making parts for unorganic reasons. You could uh, yeah, make those non-organic forms now. But I'm going to show you in the next several videos how to create an actual usable sculptable mesh. And then after that, we're going to take that sculptable mesh in the next lesson and retopologize it. So it'll give you a, a really good sense of how to use uh, Shadowbox efficiently. Another thing is I want you to get used to is this feature called Remesh. This feature allows you to, let's say, turn off shadow box, and I get this. Now the problem with this form is it's a million billion polygons, actually 104,000 polygons, but still very high. Well, Remesh allows you to take this shape, and it's going to be a little hard because it's got these holes in it, but I can remesh it. Okay, and now instead of 104,000, it's actually higher. What? Well, wait a minute. Active points, 7,000. Okay, so let's cut it in half. The further you go down, however, the more apparent it turns out that it needs a higher resolution, like this. How? So you couldn't get away with really remeshing it down to absolute zero. 
but you can get close. I mean, I've seen I've seen good results on 48 and take off remesh the X, remesh it, and I can get rid of the sub tools if I needed to that I messed up on. So I can delete these, delete that one. If I needed to be more um, like the other shape, there's this also feature called Project All. It looks weird because it only allows me to use the shape I had before. Right now, it's got a shadow box around it. Okay, So if I was to take and turn shadow box off, it would just be the raw shape. Project All takes and sucks the shape against the other one using it as a template. So essentially it takes the low res and push it up, pushing it up against the high res detail. Now you can't tell. Here's the low res. Here's the high res. Alright, so those are just a few of the features I'm going to be covering, but I wanted to have a little video before we get started to show you how it works. Now, we'll go into the lesson.